we're going to be going over how to create a register mutation. And in this mutation, we're going to be creating users. So we need to have a place where we can store these users. And we're going to be doing that in a database. The database that we're going to be using is PostgreSQL. And we're going to need a way to interact with the database or actually run SQL queries and whatnot. Uh, and we're going to be using Typeform for that. And reason being, Type GraphQL works really well with it. They both use decorators, and as we're going to see, is we can kind of get some overlap usage, having a Typeform entity act as both a database entity and also a GraphQL entity, uh, which we're going to dive into in a little bit. So we're going to start by setting up Typeform in our project, and the first thing we need to do is install it and then set up an ORM config. So to install it, we need to add a few different libraries. So we need to install PG for Postgres Typeform. And then we're also gonna be hashing the passwords. We're gonna be using bcrypt.js for this. We're using this algorithm to hash passwords for simplicity of installation. I recommend Argon2 if you want a stronger hashing algorithm. Uh, so let's go ahead and install these. And then we're also gonna to need to install the types for bcrypt.js. So to do that, we can say yarn add as a dev dependency uh, at type slash bcrypt.js. So in our root directory here, we're gonna create a file called ormconfig.json. And what this file does is it is the connection, how you connect to your database. So for us, we're going to just copy their example um, using ormconfig. And it's just a array or an object, I mean, and it has connection information. Now for us, I said we were using Postgres. I'm also gonna name this default. So this is the default connection that gets used. We're gonna be using localhost. We're gonna be using port 5432. Um, and then here are three things that we need to set up. So if you don't already have PostgreSQL installed, you're gonna to need to do that. And then you're gonna to need to create a database and then also create a user and give that user a password. So I'll link an article below on how to actually create a user in your database. Um, I'm gonna call my database type GraphQL example. And I already have a user created called Postgres. Um, so I already have PostgreSQL installed, so I can just run create DB uh, and then create a DB, so type GraphQL example. Uh, and so now when I start up uh, our server, we need to actually connect to this. But before we do, there's a few more options that we wanna add to this besides this default. Uh, so we can look at all the different options we can pass in with the connection options. Uh, documentation. The one that we care about is the synchro synchronized one. So what this is going to do is it's going to add the different tables to our uh, database. So we're going to set this to true. Uh, the other one that I like to add is the one on logging, uh, just so we can add, and I think it's logging. Yep, logging is true. Uh, I like to add this one so we can see the SQL queries that actually get run. Um, and then lastly, we need to specify our directory, directory for the entities. So uh, I believe this is going to be an array. Yeah, so it's an array and we have an array of strings. And so for us, we're gonna create a source or we already have a source folder. And then we're gonna create a file or a folder called entity. And inside of that, we're gonna have a user one. So I'm gonna say source slash entity slash, and I'm gonna do star dot star. Uh, reason being, we wanna get all the files in here, no matter whether they're TypeScript or JavaScript, because when we compile our code for production, we may want to uh, use the JavaScript files. All right, so we have this these settings, and again, you can add more if you'd like to. Uh, we need to actually create the connection uh, we can do that in our main function here. And I'm just gonna do it at the top. So it'll be the very first thing that we do. Um, and we're gonna just say create connection. And we're gonna install this or import it from type orm, uh, not from .NET or from net. Um, and what this create connection does is it's gonna read from the orm config, use these settings to make a database connection. Uh, all right, so next up is to actually create the user entity. 
Uh, this is basically going to re reference or create a database table called user in the database and what fields that we want for it. Um, so we're going to go to the what is an entity docs and we're going to just use their default user entity and we're going to go from there. All right, so you can see we basically have a TypeScript class uh, where we actually specify the types of each field uh, and then type orm you add decorators on top of it. Uh, these fields to specify what they are. Uh, so for us, I'm going to get rid of the is active column or I'm going to replace it with a password which is going to be a string um, and I'm also going to add an email field. Um, the other thing I'm going to say here, so we're going to say text and I'm going to set unique to true so we don't duplicate emails uh, and the rest of this I am happy with. I'm fine keeping in a first name, last name, and ID is good. The only thing I'm going to add to this is I'm going to say extends base entity. Um, and so whenever we extend the base entity, that allows us to say user.find or user.create. All right, so now that we have this entity, um, it should actually create um, the database table. So when you say yarn start, we're going to see if everything is correct. It's going to start up and it's going to run some SQL. Uh, so we can see here it's, uh, I guess it creates the database tables. We could read through this and see what it does, but uh, this is what's running on our database. Uh, so next up, what I would like to do is I want to create a mutation and uh, create a user. So this is going to be a register mutation. Now, I don't want to just put all my resolvers in this index file, so we're going to create a little bit of a folder structure. So I'm going to say modules, and then I'm going to say user, and I'm going to say register.ts. So we're going to be putting all of our user-related things in the user folder here. Uh, and I can just copy and paste this hello resolver. And... Uh, we can get rid of what we have there from type GraphQL and re-import it over here. And I'm going to just rename this to be a register resolver. And we're going to export it. And I'm going to just import it over here. And I'm just going to add a space there. And now over here, uh, we're going to be adding a mutation, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave this query here because uh, GraphQL sometimes gets cranky when you don't have a, a single query in your whole schema. So we're going to have at least a single query by just keeping that. Um, but we can copy this um, and we can start by saying mutation. And mutation is again coming from type GraphQL. Uh, so this is how we add fields to the mutation type, we use the at mutation decorator. And so I'm going to call this register. And we're just going to give this a save um, and see if we see it in our schema. So it's saved. Um, and I can come over here to playground and I can see if we give this a refresh. We have now a mutation called register. Now right now it's returning a string, which is not exactly what I want to return. And I'd also like to take some arguments. So let's start off by adding some arguments. So over here, uh, we have a first name, last name, email, password. Uh, so we're going to start off with just creating uh, four arguments for those. So we're going to say arg, and this is coming from type GraphQL again. Um, and here you give the argument name. So for example, I'm going to call this first name. Uh, and then I have to give the name in TypeScript or the variable name. So in this case, I can call it first name. And then you have to give it the type. So the type here is just going to be a string. Give that a save. Um, and so let's just say we want to return the first name. So this is the actual variable for a function. And this is the actual name in the GraphQL schema. So I can come over here and it's going to add a, a parameter or a uh, first name argument that we can pass in here. So again, I can rename this. If I just want this to be name, it can be. Um, and it's going to change the name here. So that's the difference between what those two are. Uh, so just name there. But again, I want to keep this as first name. So we'll do that. And I want to create more than just a first name. So I'm going to say last name. And we're also going to have an email. 
and then also a password. Um, so now we're going to take these four fields and we're going to create a user off of them. So I'm going to start by hashing the password. So I'm going to say hashed password is equal to, and this is where we need to import bcrypt. And we're just going to say bcrypt.hash. And cool, this returns a promise. So we're going to say await in front. Um, and here we're going to pass in, I believe the first thing is, yep, the string and then second parameter is the salt value. Uh, so here I'm going to pass in our password that we get from the user. That's just plain text. And then we're going to pass in 12 for the salt. All right, so this hash password is what we're actually going to store in the database. So I'm going to say const user is equal to await. And we're going to say user, and we're importing this from the user entity over here. And I'm going to say user.create. And then we're going to pass in these values. First name, last name, email, and then password is going to be equal to hashed password. Uh, now, when we create a user entity like this, it actually doesn't save it to the database yet. We have to call dot save for that to happen. Um, and then lastly, I'd like to return the user back. So I'm going to say user here. So now you'll notice we're, we're not getting any type safety right now is what you might notice is like I changed it to user here and like I could return five instead and nothing's complaining to me. So how can we get this to actually check what type we're returning here and how can we get it to actually reflect that type in our GraphQL schema? So first off, uh, we just say promise and then I'm going to say user here. So I'd like to return a user back from register. So I'm going to say promise user. And so now, for example, if I say five here, it's not going to be happy that I don't have a user being returned. So that's going to make sure that in our TypeScript types, we're returning, or in our TypeScript code, we're returning the right user. But this does not update the GraphQL schema. So you'll notice here's the GraphQL schema type. Here is what we should return from the resolver. So there's two different things right now. Um, and that's that's reflected in our scheme over here. So you'll notice nothing changed, but we can see all four arguments now. Uh, so how do we get this type right here? Well, you may think we just pass in the user like that, and then we're good to go. Um, but if we look at our logs, it's going to tell us cannot determine the GraphQL output type for the register. So the thing is, we can't just pass a TypeScript type or a TypeScript class directly in here. What we need to do is we need to come annotate this class, kind of like how we did with typeorm. So the first thing that we do is we're going to say object type up here, and that'll basically make it an object type or a, a type in GraphQL. And then here we have to say which fields that we want to allow the user to query. So for example, we don't want to expose the password and allow users to query it. So the fields that I would like to expose are the email. So I'm going to say field above there, field above there, field above there and field above there. So when I decorate this with the field attribute, what that means is I would like to expose this to GraphQL or in the GraphQL schema. Now the other thing is it's gonna automatically pick the GraphQL type from here, so from the TypeScript type, uh, but it can't pick up everything. So for example, the number, is this an integer or is this a double? Because then uh, GraphQL needs to know this. But in this case, we actually want a different variable than, or a different GraphQL type than those two we're going to be using the ID type from type GraphQL. So this is something that uh, Apollo likes and can use with the normalized cache that they use. So we're going to be adding it right there. Uh, so what this gets us is hopefully it's able to understand the type now, and it does. And if we come and look at our schema now, give this a refresh. What you'll notice is we're returning this type called user. Um, and we can take a look at the user and we can see the four different fields that we annotated and we do not see the password. So the password is a database field, but it is not a uh, GraphQL field. And the other thing is we can add fields that are only GraphQL types. So for example, I might want to add a field called name. So name's going to be a string. We're not actually storing this in the database, uh, but it's going to be a combination of these two. Uh, and we're going to come over here to our register, and we can create a uh, field resolver 
and this is going to be similar to what we do here and we need to pass in the type here so we're going to say uh, the object user here and the field here is going to be name uh, and the reason why we have to specify the user right here is so we know which field that this is resolving for so it's resolving for the user type uh, and here the first thing is going to be whoops we can use the root decorator. So the root is going to be basically the parent. Um, so we can say parent. And again, the type of this is going to be a user. And this is going to be this value, right, that we return from register. So what I can do here is I can say parent.firstName and parent.lastName. Uh, and so we can take a look at this in our schema now refresh register we can see there's now this name attribute and this is not stored in the database just in our schema so that kind of gives you an idea of how we can annotate these different fields and we can have uh, database columns we can have just graphql schemas or schema columns uh, or fields i guess or both um, and we're still able to kind of reuse this class for both and all right, let's try out our schema and see if we messed anything up with it, um, or at least our mutation, I mean. So we're gonna call register here, and we're gonna just pass in our things. So we're gonna say first name, hey, last name, Bob, and let's make this uh, pretty as well. So we'll call prettyfy, and we'll do our password. And now I need to select some fields. I'm just going to select the ID, first name, last name, and the email. And why not? Let's select our, you know, what? I'm actually not even sure if my name resolver is going to work. So let's just run this first. Uh, let's run this. Okay, cool. We get the data back as we expect. Now let's add the name attribute here. I think it's going to throw an error because we already created a user called uh, bob at bob.com so let's just say bob2 because we said the email has to be unique uh, run this and cool looks like my field resolver for name worked so awesome and we can see the first name hey last name bob appended right there uh, so cool so that is kind of our first real uh, type graphql resolver uh, where we are registering a user